The S&P 500 today has had some very interesting moves with one of the large driving forces behind this being the infamous US politician Nancy Pelosi who has disclosed some more trades in her portfolio. Now we are going to run through all of these in today's episode. The major talking point is that she added 10,000 more shares of Nvidia which as we can see since she bought is down around 1.44%. Now this is a company which as we can see is already up 202%. She did already buy this not too long ago and is up significantly and essentially when we do take a look at her purchase which was traded on the 26th of June not that long ago she did spend an additional 1.2 million dollars. So taking a look at this company as we said Nvidia a massive growth company just over the last year also over the last 10 years it is up 27,000% and as we do note Wall Street still indicate that this company is a strong buy. Now just because Nancy Pelosi has bought it it doesn't mean you should and as always when we have run it through our essential valuation model we did get in the latest episode a $140 price target. Now how did we arrive at that? Well for those that did watch the episode you will remember we ran it through the DCF model where we have the free cash flow year on year. We saw that the average growth was 94% and we used a low, medium and high rate. In the end we ended for the medium rate of 30%. As we can see when we use that with the discount rate we got the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value which we added to the cash subtracted to the total debt got to the equity value and divided by the shares outstanding. Now if you do still believe that a 30% is accurate you will note that there is around 9% upside still for Nvidia. For those that believe other rates are applicable as we can see we also had a lower rate of 25 and a higher rate of 35 which did give the alternate upside slash downside. So for Nvidia even though Nancy Pelosi did recently purchase a massive amount of shares 1.2 million dollars in fact it doesn't change our investment thesis our intrinsic value of 140 when we do use that 10% margin of safety which as always we execute if it meets our three golden criteria a wide moat strong financial metrics and good forward looking data we can in fact see that our acceptable buy price would be not too far off the current value so for those that do see Tempson as sufficient Nvidia right now we would say is a buy at around 126 dollars now that doesn't stop Wall Street with their forecast which actually as we can see $144 they do believe there to be 13% upside over the next 12 months. So as noted she has added more shares and as we can see to be exact 10,000 on June 26th. Now her movement in her portfolio does not stop there. The next thing that she has done is she's added around $5 million of Broadcom in terms of purchase calls. And what we can in fact see here is that this was traded on the same day June 24th and in fact this company is up 7.1% since she traded and just today we can see it is up 4.33%. Don't forget this company over the next few days is expected to perform its 10 for 1 split and we do know 97% up over the last 12 months. Over the last 10 years again a very strong performance not as strong as Nvidia as we saw still 2262%. No surprises then Wall Street also indicating a strong buy very similar to Nvidia they both are trading right there towards their 52 week highs. Now in terms of the valuation for Broadcom what we can see is we actually believe unlike Nvidia there is no room for margin of safety we see it trading at a premium our intrinsic value of 165439 is driven from the fact that we have used a growth rate of 15%. Again, this is what we have used as a medium rate where we actually see downside of 4%. But as always, we do have other rates. We did use a low rate of 10% and a high rate of 20. As always though, you can click on the pinned comment below. You can run your own numbers through. If you want to change this, for example, you believe it's 40%, then as always, the numbers will change. But as we can see, we have gone for that medium rate of 15%. Therefore our conclusions for Broadcom is that currently it does sit at a premium. Again for those that want to see that 10% margin of safety we can see you would have to wait for around $1500. Nonetheless even though it is trading at a premium we saw Wall Street's strong buy rating and we also note that essentially they do see 10% upside over the next 12 months. Like we said that doesn't stop there she also sold 2000 shares of Visa which is quite interesting as I do personally believe when we last reviewed this this was undervalued since then even the shares are up around 2.21%. 
Now, when we take a look at this, it is around $536,000 in sum. And as we can see, her net worth is significantly high. So that is why we always like to say, whether it's Nancy Pelosi, Warren Buffett, you always need to do your own due diligence. Their investment strategies will always be very different. So if we have a quick look at the price of Visa, in fact, it is up around 0.28% today, 13% over the last 12 months. And unsurprisingly, it has outperformed the S&P over the last 10 years up just under 400%. Now, in terms of the 52-week range, it does trade in the mid to upper end of that point. We do get a double buy rating with a hold from Quant, and this also does pay a yield, although fairly trivial, at 0.78%. Now, our perspective of Visa, as we have mentioned, we do see this as an undervalued company. Our intrinsic value at 318 is also not too far off Wall Street's forecast over the next 12 months, whereas we can clearly see they do have 18% upside. We then look at that margin of safety at 10%, as we can see it by at $286 at 15% around 270, which is pretty much at that level. So for a high quality company, that is what we do believe Visa to be. We can see a 15% MOS level with Wall Street indicating 18% upside. As always with these companies, do give us your thoughts below. Now, before we move to the final movement in the portfolio, we have just released our latest free weekly article. If you want access to this or any others, it is all completely free. Do click on that pinned comment below for instant access. Our more recent article just from Monday, we've taken a look at five of the best dividend growth stocks and also talked about our own price targets for the future of these companies. And next Monday, we are releasing a spreadsheet running through all dividend kings, all of our buy prices, as well as their dividend safety. So the next movement in the portfolio is in fact Tesla, which as we can see, she sold 2,500 shares again, June 24th. And what is interesting since then, in fact, just over the last few days, it is up 34%. Now this again would have only been around half a million of her net worth, which as we said, is very, very high. So whether or not you do want to take any of this information with a pinch of salt, that is completely up to you. We just have this information so you can see, and it is interesting to note. In terms of Tesla then, its movement, well, over the last year, even after, as we can see, just over the last five days, it is up 22%. Year to date now, it is pretty much flat. Over the last year, though, it is still down around 12%. Over the last 10 years, very similar like the previous companies, they've outperformed the S&P with some very strong returns. It is also trading towards the mid to upper end of that 52 week range with a triple hold now seeking alpha Wall Street and Quant. We also do wanna point out the very high forward P at 91.25. As always though, if you do want us to do any deep dives in these companies, do let us know below. But the last time we did look at Tesla, we did give our intrinsic value at $179. Again, where this came from, we did use a 30% growth rate to their free cash flows into the future with a medium rate showing downside of 27%. Even if we were to use 35%, we could see that is pretty much then trading at a fair value. So if you do believe over the longer term, Tesla will grow its free cash flows at 35%, then right now we would indicate this company is fairly valued. In terms of looking at the margin of safety, then as we said, it is now trading at a premium to our expectation. For those looking at a 10% margin of safety, around $161, which actually it was around that just over the last 12 months. In terms of Wall Street, we did get a triple hold from analysts, so no surprises that it does sit around $210. And as we can see, implied downside of 15%. And finally, we just want to point out that as always, you should do your own due diligence. Whether she's bought Nvidia, Broadcom, sold Visa and Tesla, it doesn't necessarily mean this is exactly what you should do. Just something to understand for that transparency, though these are her movements. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below, whether or not you are adding to any of these, whether or not, in fact, you agree with the decision she's made to her portfolio. And as always, if you do enjoy that content, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button. And as always, we'll see you all on the next one.